Good morning. I've been experimenting with uh, different ways of moving energy in my body, giving my body different information. For instance, this one technique I've discovered to um, sort of insert more energy into my physical system. And another one today I've been experimenting with um, increasing the energy of support and um, stability and that sort of thing. And I was contemplating why it is that I can do those things. And I think, you know, part of it is that I've learned to listen to my body really carefully. And that's been, I didn't start out that way. So, you know, if you want an example of being able to overcome immense hurdles in listening to your body and your, your intuition and stuff, I'm a perfect case example because when I was younger, I was entirely cut off from my body. For instance, I had a child when I was 18, and I was so cut off, I actually never felt him move inside me. So, I mean, <laughs> we're talking completely oblivious. And now I've come so far from that that I can put my hands on my body in a certain place and feel what's going on on an energy level and you know how to improve that and how to just to know what's going on essentially so I think part of it is that I've learned how to listen to my body and part of it is that I am able to just be present with it and not like, I mean, be in my body. So I'm trying to say <laughs> that instead of being in my head thinking about what's going on in my body, I'm actually in my body and just observing, essentially. So people often ask how to learn to hear their intuition and how to learn to hear their heart and I always say that the first place to start really is to start listening to your body because it's the same thing it's all expressed in your body and your body is like the communication device like a, a mirror like a teacher like a guide so if you can listen to your body all of this becomes more available to you and in terms of how to learn to listen to your body that's longer than I can do in what 10 more minutes or something um, but I would say just start noticing what you actually feel and then respond appropriately. And this is sort of, you know, the very general, the overall pattern of how to start. But that's the core of what's going on. And the listening and responding is something that people don't get, you know, as part of the process. We think, because we're doing this in our heads, mostly, we're thinking about what's going on in our body. And we want, and we think we want to know what's going on in our body. And it, there's all this stuff, but what happens is, if you actually know what's going on in your body, that gives you a responsibility to respond. That's what responsibility means, right? The ability to respond. And I can say that without any uh, hesitation whatsoever, because what I know is that if you stop responding then you are essentially not listening and then your body will stop and your heart will stop and your intuition will stop trying to communicate with you 
Imagine having a child who tries to speak to you, and every time they try to tell you what's important or what they need or what they feel, you go, uh-huh, 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 and then you turn around and you walk away and you completely ignore whatever they've asked for. It's not going to take that child long to learn. There's no point in talking to you, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so the, the responding is really important. If your body says, it can be really simple stuff. Like your body says, I need to go to the bathroom now. We are taught from ch early childhood not to just go to the bathroom when we need to go to the bathroom, like I'm thinking in school or whatever. You have to wait until the appropriate time. That's just telling your body, I'm not going to listen to you and your needs are not important to me. If you have to go to the washroom, you go. That's like how revolutionary is that? If you're hungry, you eat. If you're tired, you rest. I mean, this is crazy stuff. It's way out there. <laughs> and... <laughs> But it's revolutionary, it truly is. I mean, it sounds so silly, but it changes everything when you start to actually respond in a kind and, and, and loving and present manner, like you're actually listening. Then your body can start really communicating with you, and that's how your intuition starts to communicate with you. That's how, you know, that's how I developed my ability to do psychic readings really well. It, I mean, I've done readings for a, a really long time since I was, you know, in my late teens. But there's there's a, a thing that happened when I was around 40 that changed, that really like just threw the roof, leveled up what I could do in terms of just tapping in and catching the information for someone or for myself, some you know, yeah, for myself, for other people, for just about anything. And that was the thing that really changed, I think, was my ability to listen to my body. And, I mean, there's other things involved in. We need to, we need to learn to clear and quiet the mind a little bit because if the ego's talking, we can't hear what the what's coming through from the Akashic field or the divine or whatever. And it's also helpful to, um, you know, process old traumas and clear away old patterns and that kind of thing. Because the more we're in those, the less conscious we are, the, the less aware and present we are, the less able we are to download information. So this is the kind of short version of that, but I'm, I'm getting off track. Because what I was, was thinking, what I was wanting to go to with this, is that um, your body listens to what you say and to what you're telling it and what you're telling yourself. Your body listens and responds because it doesn't know the difference between what you say and what's real. It believes everything you say. And that's, if you really understand that, that's kind of terrifying. <laughs> like, that's a heck of a lot of responsibility. But it does. It believes everything you say. It believes everything you think. And then it manifests that. It acts as if that's real. So you can use that in so many ways. Um, I've used that for healing telling my body that I'm well, smiling into my body, very powerful practice. Um, I've used that for breaking old habits and learning new ones and new skills, you know, just telling my body when I've got it, yes, that's it, that's the one, that's what we want to do, right? And I've used it in meditation. And that's, um, this has sort of been the long way around, because kind of what I thought I was going to get to was, hey, how to use this in meditation. You can tell your body, for instance, you can tell your body to relax, and then it relaxes. You can imagine relaxing, 
and your body relaxes. Um, and there are certain cues that you can give your body physically to be in a more meditative state and, and achieve deeper meditations. Okay, so I've only got a minute left, but let me give you a couple examples. If you slow your breathing, this is amazing. So immediate is the effect. Can you just, can you see if you can't just slow your breathing to a five or more counts, like five or more seconds, inhaling, five or more seconds, exhaling at a steady rhythm, inhaling and exhaling for the same amount of time. And if you can get into that rhythm, immediately your body and mind and energy field shift into a different state. And you can begin to access deeper levels of consciousness and better meditation. Another example is if you, with your eyes closed, I'll show you with my eyes open, but if you raise your eyes towards the third eye, with your eyes closed. You don't want to strain or hurt your eyes in any way. So just do that to the amount that's comfortable. But if you can look towards this spot, it shifts your focus and your energy to be aware in different ways and to be in a quieter space. The third eye is much quieter than the mental space. And uh, in, you, you can imagine looking that you're looking back into the head where the center, in the center of your brain where the gland actually is. And it's very, it's very quiet there at the intersection between the, as my one teacher says, between the north-south pole of energy that runs up and down through the spine and up all the way through, and uh, going straight back from the center of your, from the third eye to that connection point. Um, there's a calmness and an expansion there, a quietness and an expansion. It's very beneficial and helpful when you're trying to meditate. So, the long way around saying <laughs> that um, you can talk to your body and it will respond, but you can also have your body communicate to your mind where you're going and what you're doing next. Posture, oh, it's a pet passion of mine, is that your posture communicates to your mind and your emotions all the time how you should be. If you're, if you're slumped over, it, it communicates a lack of power, for instance, among other things. If your head is dropped, it communicates sadness or shame, or it, it can vary depending on other postural cues. If you stand up straight and tall, if you've ever seen Caesar Milan, he does that kind of Superman stance, right? It's much more empowered and alive and present and, you know, just powerful. So your body communicates with your mind. And when we know that, Imagine how you, you can change your life and change and accomplish things that you want to accomplish so much more easily by bringing your body into it and being all together, the, the team of you, body, mind, spirit, all working together. Body, mind, speech, and spirit, all working together. You get a lot further, a lot faster to wherever you want to go. So that's my helpful tip for today. And, you know, give it a try. And I'm going to go catch that, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Blessed be.